B12. Um, well, other than the cancer, but I had uh, seven operations and two on my brain, one there and one there. A tracheotomy, um, two on my lungs. Uh, in 2009, I was struck down with testicular cancer that spread to my lungs and onto my brain. Um, in terms of my football career, I had two back operations, a um, couple on my knee. So all in all, I've had about 17 operations. Um, but I'm still here and I'm healthy and I'm well. But um, as I said, the cancer experience, uh, two emergency brain operations where they cut the big lump out of my brain there and they drilled a hole in my head there. Um, so that was a horrific experience and one that I feel very blessed to have come through. Um, but as I said, during my career, it was probably my two back operations which ultimately saved my career. Number 16, Red. Probably Dean Saunders. Uh, I think Dino's a fantastic storyteller. Naturally funny. He's a Swansea lad like myself, so we both from, from Wales, from Swansea, same area. Another one was Ian Dowie, a uh, very, very funny man. So if I had to say two, uh, Dean, I know, does a lot of the sportsman's dinners like myself, the after dinner circuit, if you like. Um, extremely funny, great, great lad. And uh, of course, Ian Dowie as well, who I played with at West Ham. Another funny man is, uh, is down there. So them two are the biggest characters and the funniest players I ever played with. Number 15. I would think the players looking after themselves. Um, I would think it's the um, it's now that people are looking after themselves and and uh, they're very much into stretching. A lot of players are into yoga. I think with the amount of money that is in the game now, if you can extend your career two or three more years, you can potentially earn two or three more million pounds in terms of what the guys earn. So I think. 15, 16 years ago when I was coming through at Arsenal, you know, we'd have a few pints and a bit of liquid lunch and steak and chips and all this sort of dinners and curry and chips and rice. Whereas now, it's pretty much, you know, it's chicken, it's, uh, it's um, rice, it's, you know, it's, it's all the all the salads and everything now. It's not so much, you know, pub lunches and players are looking after themselves in general a lot better these days. Number 11. Probably playing for my country. I think I was very, very honoured to have represented my country, Wales, uh, on over 50 occasions. That for me is undoubtedly my biggest achievement. I went on, I played for some big clubs, the likes of Arsenal, West Ham, Celtic, Wimbledon, broke records during my career. Always scored goals, um, but representing my country at senior level, I think you can't go higher than that. You know, that's, that was the pinnacle for me. You know, to have worn that number nine shirt, um, the red shirt of Wales, the likes of John Charles, Rush Hughes, Saunders, Trevor Ford. You know, these guys had worn it before me. So very, very honoured to have played for my country and to have played at the Millennium Stadium in front of my family. 72,000 people there to sing the Welsh national anthem was um, was was definitely the the biggest uh, achievement I, I ever managed to do as a player. Number 22. What would it be? I think the lenience, um, I think the, the physicality side now is literally virtually gone from football. You know, I think the referees need to let the play run a little bit more. But there's, there's no better uh, viewing than to see two midfield players having a good tussle in the middle of the park. But potentially now when you miss time a tackle or when somebody goes in a little bit physical, um, you know, potentially you could get sent off. So I think the game has gone a bit soft. I think the referees, not always the referees' fault because they they are told to show yellow and red cards by the by the refereeing commission, the people above them. But I do think the game has gone very very soft, and it can be annoying because football is a physical game. It's not for shrinking violets, you know. So for me, um, the physicality is almost gone from football these days. Number eight. Uh, I don't like Marmite, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't mind a bit of pate, um, a bit of butter with my toast. 
I'm not a lover of Marmite. I like jam, but don't like Marmite. Number five. The Water Boys, Fisherman's Blues, probably my favourite song. Number 12. No, no I don't know. I don't, I don't like horror films, I don't like the dark. I just always sleep with the cherry on or the lights on, I don't like pitch black. So I don't I don't like horror films. I have watched them over the years, but just, just, no. I just don't like horror films. I can't sleep at night. <laughs> Number three. Oh, I don't know, probably, um, what would I have become? Oh, I, I dread to think, really, because, you know, as, as a youngster, I, I never read, I was never that um, academic, if you like, in school. Like, it was always about football. I had an opportunity to go to Luton, very young, from the age of 10, 12, trials, during the school holidays. At 16, I was offered an apprenticeship. So I dread to think what I would have come if I hadn't gone down the route of football, to be honest. But... Um, Probably, I might have owned a bar, something like that, in Swansea or London. I, I would have wanted something that would have kept me really busy. Um, but as I said, I dread to think really because it was all, it was all about football growing up for me. I was obsessed with the game, you know. Number sixteen. First wage packet. I bought some clothes because I was never really into my clothes that much as a youngster. I remember going to Luton and all the other players were always very smart with their jackets and shirts. I remember I was only on £30 a week, £30 um, YTS scheme, that's all it was. Um, but when I went to Arsenal, I started to earn a little bit more money. I can remember going and spending a few thousand pounds on jackets and shirts and ties, just to, just to look as smart as all the other players, you know, because I had the likes of the England captain in the dressing room and obviously Ian Wright, who always looked immaculate. So one of the first things I went and did was, was invest in a load of jackets and shirts and ties and so I could look as smart as the other players.